Welcome to our time of meditation. With an invitation today to open our eyes, our hearts, and our hands to the healing power of love. Whether you're here in person, and it is so lovely to see you here in person, or you join your presence on live streaming from home, from wherever you are, we come together and soften into this moment. Gently close your eyes or simply let your gaze settle in front of you. Sense your feet resting on the floor and notice all the places where your body is supported and taking a deep breath in and out. Allow yourself to arrive and be present, fully present in the stillness of this moment. Listen now to the voice of divine guidance, the voice of spirit gently speaking in your heart and mind and set your attention and intention for this inward journey. Breathing in and out, bring your awareness to your heart. Sense the rhythm of your heart beating and sense the physical space of your whole heart center open and aware. Sense your eyes, your left eye, the right eye, both eyes together. your eyelids, and whether your eyes are closed or open, become aware of your eyes vibrant with energy. Sense your hands, whether they're resting at your sides or open on your lap. Sense your fingers, the backs of your hands, the palm of your right hand, the palm of your left hand, the palms of both hands alive with energy and sensation. Feel your breath moving gently in your belly and your chest, your whole body resting in this moment, just as it is. Breathe in presence, breathe out presence. Awareness of our interbeing expands with each breath. Breath in, awareness grows. Breath out, awareness grows. Heart center filled with love, softening with light. eyes gently focused on the light within.
hands open, ready to receive. Hands ready to give. See the radiant light of Christ's love that lives in you, expanding and growing with deep awareness that there is only love. Sense your inner light lifting and merging with the light of your beloveds. Your light and being merging with the light and being of your friends and neighbors and loved ones. Your inner light lifting and merging with the nearly eight billion souls of us alive in this moment. Love light shining with no separation, no division. The veil is lifted and the light is shining onto all beings onto all of creation. Our light unites us as one blanket of love over all the earth. Our collective light radiating out to the stars and back to us as one light, one love. In this moment, in this place, there is only love love that heals and sets us free. May our presence bring peace to all who suffer in body, who suffer in mind, who suffer in spirit. May we shine light into the darkness and may all fear be washed away. May we open our eyes, open our hearts and open our hands to be to be the eyes and hearts and hands of God. And together, heal our world. And so it is. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight. In the face of ongoing war and violence in Ukraine and the devastating upheaval and loss of life happening there and in so many places, maybe like me, you found the words pointing us towards divine order a little bit hard to take in. Maybe you didn't. I did. (laughs) 
I read today's daily word earlier in the week as part of my preparation for writing my message. It was easier to look back and see how I've been led through discernment all along on my path to where I am right now, that gift of hindsight. But I found myself really struggling with how to see this current moment, this current moment of so many areas of disruption. We all want to lay down the masks that are part of the remnants of our COVID world. There's disruption and division in our own country. There are the huge disruptions in the world at war right now. And so I found it challenging to see how was even that unfolding? Could I see that as unfolding, held in divine order? It helped to read Linda Martella Witset who spoke here over the summer, and her message in the Lenten booklet, booklet, Release and Renew. Because she wrote about divine order as not being, never being, a preordained or imposed condition. It is a principle and a power. That helped me pause to see that everything that is here in our world in this moment is held in a divine organizing principle that we're a part of, that we're invited to adjust our own thinking, our actions, and to evolve spiritually. As we enter completely into our fully human, fully divine self, with a capital S. We align with our oneness in God. It's the alignment. Being attuned, that was Linda's word, being attuned with our divinity helps us catch hold of a divine idea and nourish that idea with prayer, research, and action steps. Reverend Linda quotes Charles Fillmore saying, the divine idea of order is the idea of adjustment. And she then reminds us we find empowerment and freedom in our ability to adjust shift, flip a switch, transform, or modify our thought and action. So thank you, Roger, for adjusting with me every time the title of today's message evolved (laughs) as I adjusted my thinking through prayer, research, and a desire to find action steps for me, for us, to meet this moment in our shared history. Cultivating order is not always orderly work. At least it isn't for me. It's messy, ongoing, inner work. Thich Nhat Hanh teaches us, because he still teaches us, we enter our The gift of my time in research and prayer this week is the reminder of how many teachers, how many paths, how many wisdom traditions point us to that same truth. We enter our. And yet, we forget. We close our eyes or at the very least, we narrow our vision and forget to look at each other, at the world, with our God eyes. So I'm grateful again to Roger and others who acted as a sounding board this week while I continued 
to wrestle with my holy imagination. That holy imagination that I talked about with sacred activism. Because it's lit up for me and deeply, deeply challenged by the essays I pointed us towards last week. And Roger, in his wisdom, said, yeah, you had probably four talks in that one last week. Let's spend a little time unpacking. <laughs> and so here we are. <laughs> because that messy inner work of cultivating order, it feels like it is at the heart of the adjustment of the spiritual evolution of the clear vision and call to action that is available to us when we are fully present, fully present to our unity, not just here, but our unity, to our oneness, to our divinity, to our shared consciousness. So my invitation today is to enter the mess with me. Can we look closely at where our blind spots cloud our seeing? Can we notice the logs in our own eyes before we point out the splinters in our neighbor's eyes? Can we be present to each other and to our capital S selves long enough to invite the divine intelligence to work with us, in us, through us. So we're going to take another look at the slide I shared next week. Last week. Next week we're going to look at another slide. Because <laughs> this is messy work. Thanks, Phil. So Otto Sharma, and I probably am butchering his last name, he is very pointed in his call in the two essays that I read and reread over the last couple of weeks. He's very pointed in his call to see this historic moment, this historic moment as a time of disruption that calls us to recognize our interconnectedness, that there are events around the world, including the pandemic, that has ripped away the veil of illusion. We cannot unsee if our eyes have been opened to that interconnectedness that what affects us here affects others around the world. We are connected. He lists six ways after this chart in the, in the essay that we freeze and close our minds, hearts, and will. So he talks about absencing as what happens when our minds are frozen in ignorance, when our hearts are frozen with hate and othering, and when our will, our agency, is frozen in fear. And yet, even without tackling the larger social issues alive in the world, because that will take our lifetimes, I think. When we face a disruption in our own lives, a challenge in our own lives, we are called to recognize the debilitating social and cognitive practices that Otto writes about. How do we adjust in the face of a challenge? How do we adjust and evolve with spirit when we are faced with our own blind spots? He lists these six ways that we close down. By deceiving. By not telling the truth that might be in disinformation or straight out lies by desensing, by not feeling what others might be feeling. We're stuck inside our own echo chamber. His word, but I've heard that used a lot over the last number of years. 
in that absencing, we become disconnected from our own sense of purpose, from what is calling us to our highest future. We get frozen in blaming others and inability to recognize our role in anything through the eyes of someone else. We get frozen in violence, direct, structural, or attentional. Where are we pointing our attention? And then the destruction that we see around us of planet, of people, of self, But here's the real truth of why I wanted to start with me, with my life, with us, our lives. Because when I first looked at that list, my initial thought was like, well, phew, I don't do any of that. <laughs> I don't do any of that. Wow, good job. I'm so evolved. Yeah, thanks for laughing. <laughs> um, because... Here are some questions I then had to ask myself. How often have I deceived myself? How have I not viewed a situation clearly or denied my responsibility for a habit gone off the rails or for my portion in a knotted relationship? How have I stayed stuck and absent from living into my highest purpose? How have I treated my time, my body, my mind, my spirit with unkindness, the first step in violence? Where are my blind spots? Because before I help you wipe out the dust from your eyes, I need to face clear-eyed and unflinching the log in my own. So how have you deceived yourself? How have you not viewed a situation clearly or denied your responsibility for the knots of a habit or a relationship? Have you stayed stuck and absent from living into your highest purpose? Have you treated your time, your body, your mind, and your spirit with unkindness? Where are your blind spots? Ignorance is closing our eyes, willfully or not, but willfully not seeing. It's refusing to know. It's freezing our mind. When we begin to see with clear eyes, with our God eyes, then we can move from our open minds into our open hearts. We move from absence to presence, to empathy. And yet, empathy without agency still rests in a will that is frozen in fear. In an interview, Isabel Wilkerson used the analogy of a boulder. I know I won't do her words justice here, but it's an image that has really stayed with me. So I invite you as you think about where you are in your own adjustment, in your own evolution, to picture this image of a boulder. Ignorance is refusing to see that my neighbor is being crushed under a boulder. 
I walk by, and because I am not being crushed by the boulder, I don't have to look. My blind spots, my narrow vision invites me to just keep walking. Something, some moment of disruption, some recognition, some something transforms me and then I see, oh my God, oh my God, my neighbor is being crushed under a boulder. And my heart aches, my heart breaks open with the pain and suffering of this person crushed under the boulder. I feel your pain. And yet, if that is all we do, if that is where we stay, our neighbor is still being crushed by the boulder. And so our agency, our open hands, find a way to help lift the boulder. We cannot all lift the boulder in the same way. We are not called to the same service but we are called by the same God and the same consciousness and the same oneness to find our way to lifting those boulders. And so once more, as I do probably every week, because it is so alive for me as I come back again and again to what is mine to do, and it begins with the clear-eyed, unflinching, directing my gaze at the log in my own eye. In thawing out the way my heart has frozen, in violence towards myself through unkindness, in keeping my blinders on so I don't have to be uncomfortable about what is happening around me. I need to do that messy, not easy work of setting aside my ego, setting aside how good it feels to be a helper. Thank you, Ram Das. I need to do the deep spiritual prayer, meditation, practices that fill my well that keep me standing in the embrace of the beloved. Held in that embrace and filled, not with a love that makes it easy, but filled with a love that then calls me to keep thawing when I get frozen. To feel the pain of my neighbor And reach out my hands, even if I am reaching my hands out in prayer, because I cannot travel to Ukraine. I cannot travel to the places in our own country that are ravaged right now, to the places in this earth, on our mother earth, that are dying at the hands of us. But I can find a way to do what is mine to do. Because that awakening that we believe in, that we say every week, is not for us alone. My enlightenment, my evolving as a spiritual being is not for mine alone. It is then to lift each other in beloved community. Because when that boulder is too heavy for any one of us to lift alone, we lift it together. The inner, the communion with the beloved, with our source, then feeds us for the outer.
because we remember that there is no separation. That all the growing I do on the inside invites the growing to happen all around me. And we do that together. So may we keep our gaze on both our blind spots and on our awakening. May we live into our mission and our vision. And may we open our eyes, our hands, and our hearts to be the eyes and hearts and hands of God. Always and in all ways. May it be so. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.